Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? Today we're going to find out which big brand has the best one pound frozen chicken pot pie. Is it going to be Marie Callender's, Boston Markets, or Stouffer's? I've tried different foods from all three. Some were good, some were not so good. But today, we're going to see who has the best chicken pot pie. Since I've had the most requests to review Marie Callender's chicken pot pie, we're going to start off with the number one selling premium pot pie brand, which contains no preservatives or artificial colors and is made with tender white meat chicken and a golden flaky crust made from scratch and costs $2.08. Although it doesn't have preservatives or artificial colors, it still contains a lot of ingredients. Just look at the ingredients in the chicken. Each pot pie contains two one cup servings, but who's only going to eat half a pot pie? So let's put the serving size into perspective and do the numbers for the whole pot pie. So for the whole pot pie, there's 860 calories, 50 grams of total fat, 20 grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 40 milligrams of cholesterol, 1500 milligrams of sodium, 420 milligrams of potassium, 78 carbohydrates, 8 grams of fiber, 8 grams of sugars, and 24 grams of protein. If you find these on sale, you can buy a bunch of them and keep them in the freezer until January of 2019. You can either microwave or bake these in the oven. I'm going to use the oven. It says to wrap aluminum foil around the edges of the crust, then bake in a preheated 400 degree oven for 63 to 65 minutes. Now for the Boston Markets, which is made with white meat, chicken, and vegetables in a flaky crust that costs $2.79. Unlike Marie Callender's, it doesn't say the crust is made from scratch. But if you really think about it, at some point in time, all crusts are made from scratch, aren't they? And it's also a product of Canada which honestly, I don't recall ever seeing before on frozen food, but I may have, and probably did, overlook it. There's also quite a few ingredients in this pot pie. They say the chicken is marinated, but from the ingredients, it's a brine with water, salt, and sodium phosphates, not a marinade. Again, there's two one cup servings per pot pie, but I'm gonna do the numbers for the whole pot pie, which I'm assuming most people are gonna eat the whole thing. For the whole pot pie, there's 900 calories, 62 grams of total fat, 26 grams of saturated fat, 2 grams of trans fat, 30 milligrams of cholesterol, 1300 milligrams of sodium, 72 carbohydrates, 4 grams of fiber, 6 grams of sugars, and 18 grams of protein. But it looks like it'll last in the freezer until January of 2018. You can microwave or bake these as well, and again, I'm going to bake it. And just like the Marie Callender's, you wrap the edges of the crust in aluminum foil, then bake it in a preheated 400 degree oven for 65 to 70 minutes. So into the oven it goes. Finally, we have the Stouffer's Chicken Pot Pie, which is a golden crust filled with tender white meat chicken and vegetables and a gravy made with real cream. And just when I said I've never noticed product of Canada on frozen food, I see Stouffer's Chicken Pot Pie is also a product of Canada. Just like the other two pot pies, there's a lot of ingredients and a few extra ingredients in the chicken itself. Again, there's two one-cup servings per pot pie. But once again, I'm going to do the numbers for the whole pot pie, which has 1,140 calories, 60 grams of total fat, 24 grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 90 milligrams of cholesterol, 1,620 milligrams of sodium, 116 carbohydrates, 4 grams of fiber, 18 grams of sugars, and 34 grams of protein. You can also microwave or bake these. But just like the first two, I'm going to wrap the edges in aluminum foil and then bake in a preheated 400 degree oven for 65 to 70 minutes. And from the way this pot pie is misshaped, it looks like it might have thawed out a bit or it was knocked around a bit in the factory before it was frozen. The Marie Callender's pot pie was the first one in the oven and it's the first one out of the oven. It really browned nice and evenly and the foil did its job and there were no filling blowouts. Let's crack through the crust and give it a taste. The crust looks absolutely picture perfect, doesn't it? The crust was pretty good, not soggy at all. It was good enough that I had to have another bite. I was really impressed with the size of the peas and carrots. So I had to try a carrot first, which the carrot had a nice vibrant color, was sweet and had a great texture. It wasn't mushy at all. To me, it tasted as fresh as you're going to get in a frozen meal. Then I tried a pea, which again, looked fresh, had great texture, and tasted great. 
So far, so good. Then I tried a piece of chicken. And it was a pretty big piece of chicken at that. The chicken was very tender, moist, and had a good texture and overall tasted good. I tried a bite with the chicken, peas, carrots, and the gravy. And altogether, it was delicious. And I didn't notice it before, but with a bite of everything, I could taste one of the most important flavors in a poultry dish, sage. I love it in pot pies, chicken noodle soup, and chicken and dumplings. And let's not forget about stuffing and breakfast sausage. Even the crust on the bottom was perfectly cooked, not overcooked, burnt, or soggy. It was perfect, and of course, it was delicious. For the last bite, I had to mix everything together for the ultimate pot pie bite with the crust, gravy, chicken, peas, and carrots. And you guys are gonna have to trust me on this one since I can't share it with you, the people, it tasted as good as it looked. Actually, it might've tasted even better. The Marie Callender's pot pie is delicious. It's gonna be hard for the other two to beat it with the amount of chicken, peas, and carrots and the delicious crust and gravy. The Boston Market chicken pot pie is next. And again, the crust browned perfectly and there weren't any blowouts. But the crust looked a bit different and had a buttery aroma to it. When I started cutting through the crust, it looked very light and flaky. A little different than the texture of the Marie Callender's crust. But doesn't that look good? But the looks don't matter unless it tastes good. So into my mouth it went. And immediately, I was amazed with this crust. It tasted exactly like I described it. Light, flaky, buttery, and absolutely freaking delicious. It was unlike any crust on a pot pie I've ever had. It kind of reminded me of a croissant. I had to get another bite right away. And just like the skin on fried chicken, I could simply eat a bucket of this. Now if the crust was this good, I couldn't wait to get into the rest of the pot pie. So I scooped up a piece of chicken breast. The chicken was good flavor-wise, but it had a little bit of a spongy texture to it. Definitely not bad at all, but it wasn't as good as the chicken in the Marie Callender's. The carrot was next, and it looked good, and it tasted good, and it had a good texture as well. Along with the carrots, there were corn and peas, which the peas weren't as big as the peas in the Marie Callender's, and the texture was a bit mushy, which some people don't mind. Some people like firmer peas, and some people like softer peas, and some people even like mushy peas, so it's just a matter of preference. Then I tried a bite with chicken, peas, carrots, corn, and the gravy. And altogether, it was good. But I was really missing the sage flavor. Although the crust on the top of the pot pie was phenomenal, the crust on the bottom didn't fare so well. It had the same buttery delicious flavor, but it was a bit soggy, but still good. I gave it all a mix together, and you can see it has a good amount of carrots, corn, and peas, and a fair amount of chicken. I took a bite of everything mixed together and it was pretty good, but it was missing sage. Up last is the Stouffer's Chicken Pot Pie. And just like the first two, the Stouffer's browned up nice and evenly and again had no blowouts, but it did have that questionable looking slit in the middle. I'm not going to touch that one. And just like the first two, I wanted to try the crust first. And it started crumbling up a bit, but it looked pretty good. And it tasted pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. But I think I got spoiled on the Boston Market crust. I scooped up one more piece of the crust and it crumbled up. Then I went in for a piece of chicken. And the chicken was okay. It had good texture and good moisture but it was bland. The peas and carrots seemed to be scarce in this pot pie. So I ended up getting one of each with a little gravy and a small piece of chicken. And again, not a whole lot of flavor at all. Very bland in my opinion. But there's a fair amount of chicken to somewhat make up for the lack of vegetables. But if you like vegetables like I do, it's a bit disappointing. I snuck in one more bite of chicken before trying the bottom crust. The bottom crust was pretty good. It wasn't totally soggy, but it was getting there. Finally, I mixed everything together for one final ultimate pot pie bite. When I mixed it all together, I found a few more peas and carrots. But the peas and carrots were much smaller than any other two pot pies. And the flavor and texture was underwhelming. 
but unfortunately, it's kind of what you would expect in a typical frozen pot pie. The last bite I took looked a whole lot better than it tasted, just not a whole lot of flavor. So let's review the three pot pies we tried today from the worst to the best. Coming in at number three, surprisingly, it's a Stouffer's Chicken Pot Pie, which Stouffer's usually has decent products. The crust was not nearly as good as the first two. It tasted like a typical frozen pot pie crust. Nothing special and very crumbly. The filling wasn't much better, but it did have a decent amount of chicken, but not a whole lot of vegetables. The peas and carrots were much smaller and a bit mushy. The overall flavor was just bland. And Stouffer's usually having decent quality products, I was very disappointed. And I had to give it just an average score of five out of 10. The runner up is the Boston Market Chicken Pot Pie, which if I didn't mention it already, the crust was phenomenal. It was buttery, flaky, light, and fan-freaking-tastic. If I was scoring on the crust alone, it would get an automatic 10. The chicken was good, but it had somewhat of a spongy texture to it. The peas, carrots, and corn had good texture and were good size. The gravy was good with decent flavor, but man, it would have been so much better with sage. Overall, it was a very good pot pie, and is why I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. The best and the cheapest pot pie out of the three, if you haven't guessed it already, is the Marie Callender's. It was the hardiest pot pie out of the three, with lots of big vegetables and pieces of chicken. Thanks to the sage, the gravy also had the best flavor out of the three. The crust was good, just not as good as the Boston Market's. If this pot pie had Boston Market's crust, it would get a perfect 10. But without it, I can only give it a nine out of 10. These were all edible and inexpensive for the amount of food you get. But regardless of what they say on the box about not containing this or that, they're still processed foods, which I personally don't and wouldn't eat often. Even though making a homemade pot pie at home is less convenient, it's gonna taste better and it's gonna be better for you. If you'd like to help support the Wolf Pit, consider being a patron. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month, that's only $12 for the whole year. Or you can pledge more, that's up to you. Either way, every little bit's appreciated and helps me produce more high quality videos more often for you, the people. Thank you all very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you soon.